Well, hello. Welcome to Fit and Free with me. It's a yoga time. I'm still working on my level one yoga certification. And so I will be practicing my Sanskrit words. And I am still doing a digestive health series because it's so important. And I personally had some struggles with my digestive health. I'm happy to say that uh, these exercises have been helping and I'm feeling more well. Still not out of the woods yet, as they say, but um, perhaps that's the world we're living in these days. It's a little bit woodsy. <laughs> Anyhow, my list I'm still working from is going to include cat cow or marjari asana and bitel asana, downward facing dog or adho mukha, child's pose, balasana, supine twist, Supta Matsyender Asana. I need to see if I'm even practicing that one correctly. <laughs> Bridge Pose, Setu Bandha Saravang Asana, that as well. An Extended Puppy Pose, or Utana Shishosana, my favorite one to say. <laughs> and one of my favorite ones to do lately in the new pose category. So without further ado, I'm going to get to it. And... Just to mention, you can follow along to whatever degree feels good in your body, or you can do your own thing, or you can use this as inspiration to put together your own thing later. I encourage you, however you do it, to listen to your own body, check in with yourself, give yourself a little extra love and a little extra movement if you can, because that's what your body's made to do. I'm going to take just a couple breaths to ground myself into the center of the earth, checking in with the spine, aligning myself between the sky and the center of the earth, <sighs> relaxing the shoulders, just focusing in on where I'm making contact with the earth. I think I'm going to reverse the order a little bit of how I've been doing things and start in supine position with a little supine twist or supta matsyender asana. It's a good time to remind you, you don't need any special boots or any special hand-built dome to check in with yourself and do a little extra, extra. Supine twist is can be done with one leg bent and one leg straight or can be done with both knees together. I'm going to be working with both knees together and I'm trying to aim for like 90 degree angles here and here, although you'll notice it varies. And I'm going to be pressing the low back. So kind of take a moment to lengthen the spine, pressing that low back down. If you needed to, you could use your hands for support here and just do the lower half of this. I'm going to be putting the hands under the head and keeping my elbows and shoulders pressed into the floor. And then I'm going to take the legs to the right and the head to the left, keeping those elbows and shoulders down and bringing both knees down together over to one side for a nice supine twist or supta matsyendra asana. I'm running, in, running into artwork over here. It's an issue. <laughs> uh, I'm getting a nice twist through the spine, giving those organs a hug, and then I'm gonna engage the abdominals and bring the knees back up. Lost that 90 degree angle. Let's try that to the other side. Knees to the left and head to the right, keeping those elbows and shoulders pressed down and getting a nice twist through the spine, giving all those internal organs a hug. Let's relax into that twist for a breath or so, letting everything go, and then engaging again, bringing those knees up to center and head back to center. And then let's go the other way one more time to each side, head to the left, knees to the right. And I'm still not keeping that 90 degree angle and I'm still hitting the artwork. It's all a work in progress, it's okay. And bringing that back up to center and then over to the left and looking to the right down. I'm, run, I'm running into other stuff over there. See, you just work with what you got. That's okay. And then coming back up to center. 
I'm going to put those knees, those feet down. I'm going to actually add a little bit more stretching while I'm down here. So bringing that left knee up toward the chest and extending the right leg. And I'm just going to do some circles with the hip here because that feels good. I'm going to be doing extra work soon, probably starting today because it's October 1st. Uh, preparing for snowboarding season. Every year I think, why did I stop? This year has been rough. I've had some roughness, exchanging legs and bringing that right knee up, extending the left leg. Let's do some circles with that one in the hip. Just gentle circles one way and the other, just noticing where there's tension, where there's suppleness, how the two sides are the same and how they're different. I should have added some ankle rotation there. I'm gonna do that on this side. And we'll bring this side back up and do a little bit of ankle rotation. I got my winter boots on already just cause it's a little bit cooler and I like them. It's not that cold yet, but it's all right. I've been walking early in the morning. So I'm gonna shake those out a little bit. Maybe like to rock the whole body with the heels. I'm flapping the feet, anchoring the heels kind of get the whole spine aligned and relaxed. <sighs> and then I'm going to roll over to the side and come back up to seat it. And I'm going to flip on over and do some cat to cows. I'm going to adjust the britches and the shirt <laughs> as needed and come first into tabletop position. So that's knees under hips, hands under shoulders back relatively flat, looking for energy out the top of the head and out the tailbone. And then I'm going to be doing Majari Asana or cat, pulling in with the tailbone, tucking the chin, arching the back, pushing through the palms, spreading those shoulder blades apart. And Bittil Asana or cow pose. Pressing still up through the hands, lifting the eyes, lifting the chest, Lifting the tailbone, holding in on the pelvic floor and the belly. And then I'm going to add the breath and do alternate those a little bit. And coming back to neutral, I'm going to tuck the toes under and lift the hips and the knees, pressing back into downward facing dog or Adho Mukha, <clears throat> pressing into those heels, fingers are wide, palms are strong on the ground, spine and head are in line, I'm pulling back in those hips and tipping the tailbone up. Pressing into those heels at the same time. I like to alternate bending the right knee and pressing into the left heel. And then bending the left and pressing into the right. And again on each side. A little bit more into the left. And a little bit more into the right. Pressing again into both heels. I'm gonna slide these hands out and come into a cobra pose a little bit for a counter stretch. Just dropping the hips and the belly, releasing the toes, lifting the eyes and the chest. Uh, you stretch the tongue out there, make some funny noises if you want to. I give you permission to make funny noises. It's good for you. Not only do I give you permission, I encourage you. I'm gonna come back now from here into child's pose, pushing back into balasana, 
folding up the body, bringing the hands behind and just placing the forehead on the floor, either to one side or forward. Ah, and just checking in with the body, relaxing. <clears throat> I like to jiggle sometimes, rock a little bit, just let things settle, check in, relax. Ah. And from here, I'm going to come up onto the knees and do bridge pose or setu bandha saravang asana. You can either leave those feet flexed and reach for the heels or bring them up onto the toes and reach in for these heels, either one at a time or both. And I'm nursing a arm injury, so I'm going to do the heels up to lessen that stretch and then pushing forward with the pelvis, protecting the low back with the buttocks, glutes, stretching through the front, protecting the neck with the shoulders. You can put the head back a little bit, but I like to keep mine up a little because lifting it back up is hard on my neck and shoulder injuries. I think in the near future, I'll be doing a series where I walk us through each of these poses and some of the nuances of them. And releasing that, I'm going to come from there into extended puppy pose or Uttana Shishosana. And I'm going to, again, look, be looking for that 90 degree angle between the low legs and the upper legs. And then I'm going to slide these arms out, get me a nice counter stretch through the shoulders, sliding them out a little bit more, extending that stretch, really holding back through the hips. Some nice tension there through the top and bottom of the body. And sliding the fingers out a little bit more. I'm going to release the head and relax the forehead on the floor. You can do that if that's comfortable or if you need to come out of the pose at any time. That's, of course, just perfectly fine. I'm going to come back up. And let's just sit down and stretch it out a little bit. That was nice, quick, and short and sweet six poses that I picked out specifically for digestive wellness and health. And uh, yeah, I think digestive wellness and health is kind of at the root of all other wellness and health. If you don't have that, then everything else is compromised as far too many of us know. So uh, the arms are important too though. <laughs> stretching those out. I tend to carry a lot of tension in my shoulders and then if I'm not careful I tend to injure myself so it's an ongoing process of learning. Giving that some counter stretching. Let's do a little more upper body stretching while I'm into it. Just kind of stretching side to side. Let's add a little twist while we're sitting. I'm just following my own body now, really. So you can follow me or follow your own body and see what feels good. Let's kind of explore the edges of that, press into the edges of it. Speaking of that, this doesn't necessarily feel good, but it's good for me. Do some little circles with the hands and the fingers, stretch those out. <sighs> I got some pain in there. Let's do some shoulder rolls as well. Hmm. These are all great to just throw into your day anytime. I like to call them two minute tools. You'd be amazed what two minutes can do. We're pushing the, the 12 or 14 minute mark here, but uh, that's good too. And 22 minutes is good too. 42 is good too, but also, Two is pretty good as well. <laughs> anyway, however many that you're giving yourself today, I hope that you're remembering to stay curious, stay courageous, stay fit, and stay free if you can. Thanks for being you. Thanks for letting me be me. 
Don't forget to like and subscribe and check out the description for ways you can support me, including should be a link to Amazon where you can buy my book about the head hut here. There's four different versions or eight different versions, electronic and paperback and black and white and color and with and without my dramatic story of why I built it. But in any case, um, as you can see, it's pretty fantastic. I'm pretty proud of it. So check that out if you're interested. And until next time, ciao.